hello everyone hi what is up it's me angie welcome welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of music and makeup yay i have no makeup on here today because we are going to be listening to a new album while i do my makeup today we're in a new era today we're going to be starting our melanie martinez era whoa hey, baby. oh my gosh you crazy cat Pretty Me is here to say hi, as always. Look at this tail. <laughs> we have exited our Lana era, and we are now entering our Melanie Martinez era. I am so excited for this. So yeah, today we'll be listening to Cry Baby, the deluxe edition. So all 16 songs here today. I'll be doing so while I do my makeup, and it's gonna be a good time, as always. So if you want to subscribe, that would be great. It gives you a thumbs up while you're at it. I know you have lots and lots of videos you're watching right now, so I appreciate the fact that you decided to stop by and click on my video. I have all the ones we clicked on instead. Thank you so much for being here. So we have 16 songs. Let's just jump right into it. Let's start my makeup. So let's get into it. Let's listen to Cry Baby, the deluxe edition from Melanie Martinez. The first song, self-titled, Cry Baby. Okay. You seem to replace your brain with your heart. Those cry baby tears come out of the door. You have to be for your body. It's why you won't feel inside. You pour it up where everyone can see. They call you cry baby, cry baby. But you don't fucking care. Cry baby. Cry oh. Okay, you seem to replace your brain with your heart. You take things so hard and then you fall apart. So, someone's just very sensitive. You try to explain, but before you can start, those creepy tears come out of the dark. I feel that because sometimes it's so hard to explain things because I just like start to cry out of frustration, out of sadness. Usually it's frustration and just anxiety, I guess. Fear of like what I'm saying and what that reaction will get. And so sometimes like I try to explain how I feel, but I just, I, I can't even explain it and I just start to cry. So I totally understand that. You pour it out where everyone can see. So this person seems, seems to kind of leave their heart on their sleeve and seems to just be very like an emotional person. Your heart's too big for your body. It won't fit inside. I, I feel like that's a good thing. I feel like to have empathy and, and have a heart very big is is a beautiful sentiment here melody doesn't literally mean the crybaby's heart is too big for their body rather she's using a metaphor to describe crybaby's empathy towards others which allows others to take advantage of her is she talking about her, like herself in third person like you but like referring to herself when she says you seem to replace your brain with your heart she seems to think more with her heart than her brain she's a very emotional person and they call you a crybaby but you don't care you laugh through your tears crybaby crybaby because you don't fucking care so it seems like because you know this person's very emotional that they get called or maybe it's melanie herself gets called a crybaby for it but she doesn't care because maybe she's just like um not proud of it but like is very self like self acceptance of who she is or who they are that they are quote unquote a cry baby yeah i'm a cry baby sure i have lots of empathy and i'm a good person i have a big heart i don't care what you have to say it feels very like like non-apologetic <laughs> Oh. I love this like production. I love this melody. It's like so catchy. The verse 2 says you're all on your own. You lost all your friends. You tell them yourself that it's not you. It's them. That feels like someone's maybe too pride to admit when they're wrong in that situation. Like you're one of a kind. No one understands. But those crybaby tears keep coming back again. It almost feels like a shield to protect themselves, this, this pride. They're like, yeah, I don't care. I'm on my own, yeah, I don't have my friends, but I'm fine, I'm one of a kind. But truly deep down inside, they know that they're hurting. Wow. 
but I don't care. She turns it on herself. Oh my god. I feel like almost when she says you're, she's speaking to the listener, like me. She's like, you're a crybaby and I'm just like you. Oh my gosh. I'd like you to see myself. I know you better than anyone else. I had the same faucet in my eyes, so your tears are mine. In the bridge, Crybaby addresses someone just like her, and by switching the pronouns from you to I in the following chorus, Melanie reflects on how Crybaby mirrors herself. Mmm, so Crybaby is like this fictional character. <laughs> I really, really like that song. In the About section on Genius, this is Crybaby is about people, including Melanie Martinez, who are extremely sensitive and tend to be upset easily, consequently ending in tears. Crybaby is a character who Melanie describes as a child who experiences adult things. Oh. However, there are some things in Crybaby baby's story that Millie did not experience herself. The story and illustration for this song appears on the third page of the Crybaby storybook reading. Saddest girl she has to be. Salty tears stream down her cheek. Her heart bigger than her body. Her name is Crybaby. I love a story like in an album. I think that's why I like Preacher's Daughter from Ethel Kane so much. And like I love Folklore from Taylor Swift, that album, because of the little like storyline in there as well. Okay, next up is Dollhouse. Such interesting, like, I almost feel like imagery in, in her music. I almost feel like I could see like a doll, like those creepy, almost like wooden dolls, like going back and forth like that, like as if it was like, maybe it was like a part of a clock or something. Such interesting, like, production. Open the walls, play with your dolls. We'll be a perfect family. And mom, please wake up. Dad's with a slut. And your son is smoking cannabis. Don't let oh. him see what goes down in the kitchen. Places, places, oh, I've heard this song. Places, everyone oh. thinks that we're perfect. Please don't let oh. them look through the A perfect little family. So yeah, this feels like it's about this picture perfect family. How really behind this picture perfect family is something not so beautiful, a little more darker than what is portrayed. Yeah, it seems like the dad maybe is cheating on the mom and the son is getting high all the time who knows what happens in the kitchen lots of arguments because you feel like arguments always happen in the dining room and kitchen area because that's whenever conversations happen like around, around like a dining table or like in the kitchen because people get together to like eat and stuff i feel like and usually that can result in arguments and maybe something even darker than that. The theme of this song is a family that seems perfect, like the families that are often played within a dollhouse. Mm, but under it all, there's chaos and imperfections. Family's household characterized as a dollhouse because they're both falsely perfect. True, like in this kind of fantasy girlhood world, they paint a picture of a perfect little family with cute little clothes and a cute little house when you play with dolls. Hey girl, look at my mom, she's got it going on. Ha, you're blinded by her jewelry. When you turn your back, she pulls out a flask oh. and forgets his infidelity. Oh, oh if she's coming to the I think this is very relatable for a lot of people. Feeling like your family just puts on an act and just feeling like dishonest 
to the world. Dollhouse is about a family that appears to be perfect on the outside looking in, yet it's far from it. It was later revealed that it serves as a prequel to Sippy Cup, which is our next song we have on the list, in which we find out what goes down in the kitchen. Mm. In Dollhouse, her mother is an alcoholic tutor, her husband's infidelity, and the son is engulfed in the the life of drugs. The daughter is the only one that sees the tragedy surrounding her. Okay, next up is Sippy Cup. Oh my gosh. Syrup in a Sippy Cup? Oh dang, okay, this is this is angry, it feels resentful. And we start out the song with blood still seems when the sheets are washed. Sex don't sleep when the lights are off. The kids are still depressed when you dress them up. And syrup is still syrup in a sippy cup. Oh, oh, syrup is in this case like alcohol. <gasps> Allusion to Crybaby's mother, mother's alcohol abuse. Putting a drink in a cute sippy cup doesn't mean it's no longer a drug. No matter how much a person may try to dress up a situation in the end, the problem still persists. Dang. You could wash your, your sheets, but the blood stains are still there. And even if you get your kids dressed up all nice, looking good on the outside, on the inside, they're still not feeling good, they're still depressed. You can try and hide it, you can try and cover it, but the darkness and the true problem is still there. Dang. He's still dead when you're done with the bottle. That is, oof, that hurts to hear. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You got weights in your pockets to the doctors. I feel like that has to do with maybe like someone's eating disorder. Your favorite candy's cotton makes you think of like drugs. Known as the cotton ball diet, people dip cotton balls in a drink, usually a sweet one, and then swallow it in order to feel fuller <gasps> and lose weight. Oh my god. Rotten teeth are often side effect of eating disorders. This diet is the one that the mother partakes in, although it is dangerous. As part of her self-denial, she thinks it's thinks of it as cotton candy. This also could be about oxycodone. The theme I think of just the whole song is just that that these people are just messed up. I don't want to sound insensitive, but just that like no one knows okay in this family. The kids are depressed, the mom is drinking and maybe doing drugs. The mom or maybe a daughter or someone has an eating disorder. It just seems like a lot of just mental anguish and if we, and if we connect to the other song Dollhouse, this feels like just like a deeper inspection on this family that puts up this front of perfection. Syrup is still syrup in a sippy cup. Wow. Wow. Dang, this is like some real shit, man. She's saying some real shit. <laughs> okay, next up is song four, Carousel. <laughs> Chasing after you is a fairy tale, but I feel like I'm glued tight on this carousel or carousel. So maybe just a relationship that just seems to just keep on going over and over again. Like she can never really ever catch up to be with this person. It's just going round and round, and she can never catch up. She's basically like running in place. Mm. 
why did you steal my cotton candy heart? Referring to, you know, this guy that she fell for. He seemed to kind of just not care about her feelings, throw, throw it in the coin slot, like, and now she's like, you clearly don't care about me, but now I'm, I'm hooked on you because you took my heart. You, you made me like you. You made me love you. And now you just threw me away and now I'm stuck on you and I can't seem to get off. And I'm going round and round and getting nowhere because I just can't seem to like give you up, basically. It's always unsure. It's always a question mark. But I think that's what keeps her going is that it's not a no, but it's also not a yes. So she keeps him going round and round. She has like that hope that she will catch up with them. <laughs> Carousel exemplifies a love that goes in circles. Melody sings about chasing after someone that she can never truly reach. This is Cryberry's first love encounter, making her situation even more frustrating when she realizes she can't not move forward or grow in this relationship. On to song five, Alphabet Boy. kind of like a little up of a boy you just think you're so smart with your degree it's kind of like sarcastic a little bit a little condescending i'm not a kid like i'm smart like you can't like hold over me like you know more than me you build me up like building blocks just so you can bring me down Oof. yeah that's that that's who this kind of guy is he likes to control you manipulate you mm-hmm in some emotionally or psychologically abusive relationships, the abuser will build up their partner's self-esteem in the beginning. Then after the abuser has gained their partner's trust, they will bring them down again and keep doing so because the partner is attached now. In many situations, an abuser will come across as kind and gentle to everyone else who in turn don't think they are capable of abuse and therefore are less likely to believe the abuser's victim. Yeah, because they manipulate everyone else around them too. I just filmed for a couple minutes, I totally was not even recording. It's talking about the verse two and how it goes like apples aren't always appropriate for apologies and then B for butterscotch and then C child, D daddy, like it's kind of like the um, alphabet. So clever. I say fuck you. Interesting. She has such a style to her her production and her voice, and it's it's just such a such a different and unique just like vision. Again, and with Alpha Boy, it's another kind of thing revolving themes of like children, Cry Baby, Dollhouse, Sippy Cup, Carousel, all children themes, and it's so curated and and thematic. It's really really good. On the about section on Genesis it says after being stuck on a carousel of relationship, Crybaby decides to break things off. Melanie Martinez told Vice that Alpha Boy is her and Crybaby's breakup song. I wanted to title it Alpha Boy because he was in college for music and used to had to teach me how to write songs as if there was a formula or I wasn't writing songs correctly. It made me furious. I just wanted to elaborate on that. Me and Jeremy use a lot of alliteration in the song for all the verses. We wanted to go in the order of the alphabet. Yes! So cool! Okay, song six is called Soap. <laughs> Ooh, that's 
builds up here. It drops. Oh, okay. And this bubble for the soap and the drop. Wow, so like thought out. Everything is so thought out. Such a clear vision. Every moment in every song on this album so far is so meticulously thought out. The dropping bubbles, like what? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's why she needs to clean out her mouth with soap. They say cleaning your mouth out with soap. They say that whenever someone is like having a bad mouth, like them using bad language, but instead she's here saying like, because she said I love you to someone and maybe they didn't say it back, it was like an awkward situation. So like, I wish you never said that. I wish I could just wash that away. Which she says, I'm tired of being careful, having to tiptoe around everything, trying to keep the water warm. I said too much, it overflowed. Why do I always spill? Yeah, maybe saying too much and this person wasn't feeling the same way and, and it kind of made things awkward between the two. Oof. This like build up is so good. <laughs> so fun. A bop, I must say. A bop. It's just about regretting something you said. Yeah, just wishing she never spoke, like she says. In an interview with Elle, Melanie Martinez stated that soap is about being vulnerable and also explained its background. Everyone is allowed to be vulnerable. I think women and men and dogs and cats and ants and aliens can all express themselves and be vulnerable. Soap was written about my current boyfriend when we were first talking. I felt too scared to say how I felt about him and thought if I told him, it'd be like throwing a toaster in the bath, dead. So I washed my mouth out with soap. I think anyone can really relate to this song. I'm sure there was a time in everyone's life where they felt too scared to say how they felt, so they washed their mouth out with soap. So to not say that thing. Okay, song seven, Training Wheels. Riding down, riding down, my hand on your seat the whole way around. Wheels aren't even touching the ground. Oh, oh, song. Training wheels are attached to bicycles in order to maintain a cyclist in proper balance. As they get older, they become more condoned to feeling uncomfortable. They become confident enough to take the training wheels off, but also become vulnerable to toppling over and losing their balance. Cry Baby wants to get serious, insisting that she can be of help in relinquishing his fear of commitment. He can call her out on her flaws, which Cry Baby proves he's invested in a way that implies they're ready to move things further. She wants them to be bold and not hold back anything, to be metaphorically bare and naked in each other's presence. Mm hmm All their insecurities are laid out without the training wheels. They can get hurt, but she wants to take the risk with and for him. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Telling you things you already know. I explode, I explode. Asking you where you want mm. us to go. Mm. You've been riding two wheelers all your life. This is actually really sweet. That was 
cute. That feels like, yeah, it feels like a love song. Yeah, Melanie told Pop Dust that Training Wells is the first song she'd ever written. Okay, next up, song eight is Pity Party. this song as well okay so, so no one came to her party did all my invitations disappear no one showed up and now she's having a pity party because of it like because no one showed up but maybe no one showed up because they have no friends like we heard earlier in the song and now she's gonna just be sad about it feel pity for herself maybe if I knew I loved them Wow, the production is so good! Oh my god, this is such a fire song! Wow! What a fucking explosive song! Love it! Pity Party revolves around Crybaby getting upset because nobody came to her party, resulting in an emotional breakdown. So freaking fire. Yeah, it seems like Crybaby says they don't care but really they care deep down like we've heard before they're like oh whatever more cake for me but they're still having a pity party they're still feeling bad at themselves all right next up is tag your it oh my gosh kidnapped i got candy for you inside but it's wrapped up in like a child's game like tiger it but really he's chasing you because he's trying to kidnap you oh my gosh what the hell oh my gosh Oh my gosh! fun ending i loved how it like twists and turns to like a really like sinister sound which i think just again is so perfect with how the song is it's like obviously something very dangerous like getting kidnapped wrapped up in like a childlike fun game like tag your it and is there like cannibalism or something a little bit of poison in me i can taste your skin in my mouth i love it when i hear you breathing i hope to god you're never leaving that sounds disgusting it's in quotes as if maybe the kidnapper saying this to the child no oh my god no 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 Ugh. okay next up milk and cookies
gosh, what the fuck? Crybaby refused to be held captive any longer. Okay, yes, they were held captive in the last song. Now that her captor is shocked by the latest cookie, she's looking forward to his impending fate. Mmm, death. Oh my god, this is crazy. What the hell? I did not expect this to happen in this, in this album. <laughs> These topics being wrapped up in like this like childlike theme is so like it makes it feel more creepy You know it makes it feel more like sinister uncomfortable in a way Oh man With poison milk and cookies. Oh, wow. Ashes, ashes, time to go down. Oh, honey, do you want me now? Can't take me more. Need, need to put you to bed. A single lullaby where you end up dead. Integrate crybaby is the best choice for the wolf's appetite. Ugh. Looks like the wolf made a bad decision since. Shall be the reason for his destruction. Huh. Interesting way to, interesting way to put that. Nothing Cookies follows the fantasy story of the crybaby character being assaulted in Tiger It. Oof. In an interview with Vice, Melanie said that she offers the wolf poisonous milk and cookies, which helps her escape her captor. Mm hmm. All right, song 11 Pacify Her. I think I've heard the song that sounds very familiar. The title at least does. Another like childlike toy sound. Shut that girl up and just come be with me. She wants to be the other woman. She wants this guy to leave her girl and be with her or cheat on her or something. Also, by the way, I did finish up my makeup. Super simple. I really wanted to use this palette I got recently from an indie brand called uh, Adept Cosmetics, right? This palette is the palette I used on my eyes. This like shimmery color and it just has these like most insane gorgeous gorgeous shimmers out of this world so i really wanted to play with it today this is the minka palette if you're wondering anyway back to the song So true, but still. Yeah, so it's a play on the word pacifier. Um, like what you give babies to silence them when they're crying. Basically, cry baby taking this this guy from this woman. <laughs> Pacifier is basically Crybaby being a homewrecker. She's so numb to love and doesn't think that it exists. She just stops caring at this point. Oh, interesting. The storybook reads, she escaped, it was never the same. She swayed a boy who had been claimed and pacified 
oh what's her name not out of love just played a game so she escaped her captor and she's kind of numb to everything basically song 12 mr potato head <laughs> Seems like there's a theme of like plastic surgery. Mr. Pa Mr. Potato Head is obviously a toy. You can change up the face. She's kind of making that metaphor um, with plastic surgery of changing your face and making you look prettier, better. It has to do with like society. You weren't born with it. You can buy a couple ornaments. Just be sure to read the warning kids. Ooh, like the warning that comes with warning. This could be addictive, or this could, you know this may not help solve all your insecurities and make you feel worthy and stuff like that like this doesn't solve everything and in fact it might make things worse like warning isn't an end-all cure in this day and age no matter how beautiful you may be the media will make you think you can be better one way or another Ugh, if you want to cut and paste different pieces to conform with what looks good, you can do as you please. However, creepy reminds the audience to think twice before following through with plastic surgery. Not only can you come out completely botched, but the media is constantly changing the idea of what is and what is not pretty. Mm-hmm. The ideals of beauty are in a constant cycle of subjecting people into feeling like they can't fit in, sucking them into changing their looks to be complacent with the status quo. I'm all for doing plastic surgery if you have you know, a big insecurity, if you want to change, if you want to feel pretty. But I also get that it can feel so, so hard in this world to feel beautiful when there's so much bullshit online and, in the inter and on the internet. Full transparency, I have had plastic surgery done. I did get a nose job when I was 19, I think. I'm not like ashamed of it, I don't hide it. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself. I've also gotten Botox over here and a lip flip for my smile because I have a quite wide, big gummy smile, so that kind of helps with my gummy smile. I definitely understand where Melanie is coming from here in terms of like it can be like a dangerous road to go down because you change yourself to look some way and then a couple years later society is almost like just kidding that's not what you want to look like anymore and so then you're you're like in this constant cycle of feeling insecure which can can lead you down a really dark hole of of plastic surgery and never fully fully feeling beautiful which is so sad it sucks that women and you know men too but speaking from my experience and what i understand is that you know women have to deal with this so much just like never winning if it's, it just feels like sometimes we just we just like never win in terms of eyes of what is beautiful and what isn't if you want a little more confidence potatoes turn to french fries yeah it's mm. common sense but little Aww. girls are learning how to cut and paste and they're not even more confident and comfortable in her own skin so she's forming opinions i had the idea for mr potato head for a long time and the whole visual i had in my head was the fact that you can pull toy pieces off the face and that could present plastic surgery it was not me bashing women who get plastic surgery but more of why are you doing this when you're beautiful without it <sighs> Plastic surgery is such a hot topic. It's easy for Melanie Martinez to say something like that because she is conventionally beautiful. But also it's like everybody if you deserve to be beautiful and in a world that, like in a world more than ever where beauty is so valued, well you also can't blame someone for wanting to change up something that they feel insecure about. It's a hot topic. I understand where she's coming from. Okay, next up, Mad Hatter. 
Oh my god so we go so we go from crybaby feeling like they're you know being more rational in their thinking and now they're crazy <laughs> i'm the craziest friend you ever had She's embracing it. She's embracing her mental instability. She's like, yeah, I'm crazy. This is who I am. No shame. Crybaby now embraces her craziness, her dysfunctional family, and herself because the people that truly love her will love her as she is. Okay, interesting. Interesting thought process. At this point, her mental stability is questioned because of everything that she's been through, from watching her father's murder I miss that. The falling in of love, being kidnapped, and killing her kidnapper. Yes, I know all that happened. That would take a toll on a little girl. Oh my god, true. She's like, she's supposed to be like young. Oh my gosh. Oh man. What? What a story we get here. I love that we have like a little um, ode to. Alice in Wonderland, the Mad Hatter. You can be Alice, I'll be the Mad Hatter. You know, we're all mad here. All right, next up, play date. Oh, I definitely heard this before on TikTok, I'm pretty sure. This part, it was like a sound I feel like on TikTok. Again, this is all wrapped up in childlike themes like playing hide and seek and board games and play dates. But this is really just about a man that she's casually dating. After sex, Kirby wants to go on a deeper level and stop being just a play date. However, her lover just suggests new ways to do it. But she's like, I don't care. Like, she's like, I want to be more serious with you. I want to get deeper with you. But also, I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> Maybe because she knows that guy that she's with doesn't want to get more serious. She puts up this defense like, well, you know, actually, I never wanted it anyways. I never actually wanted to be with you, really. Because you can't communicate. You know, you never um, share your toys with me. Maybe share secrets and, and meaningful things with them. I'm just a play date to you. I'm just, like, someone that you're casually with. <laughs> I 
I don't even know what the heck that just was. But the bridge is again bringing in Ring Around the Rosie. Another child game. I never know what you need. I want to give you, want to give you what you need. But she never knows because this guy never is fully getting, he never truly shares what he's feeling. I, I, I think this is kind of relatable in the sense for a lot of people where it's just like you you want someone you're with them you know casually and you want to do something more but they're clearly just not in it it's just like frustrating because they don't communicate and it's just like what am i what am i even doing here why am i even with you At the end, she breaks down her walls and finally is like, actually, I do think about you every day. I actually really do like, and, I, and I'm asking you here today, can you please be with me? Can we please be together? Can we just please be more than just a play date? Next song, 15, Teddy Bear. she's saying like you know I really did love you I really did care for you like you were my teddy bear you were my my comfort person but then you tried to kill me the person that I thought I felt comfort in the most turned their back on me teddy bear starts off really nice cute soft but after a while it gets wrecked so it turns mean ugly rough a person you start to date really nice caring soft but after a while they turn mean cruel rough narcissist abuse and neglect so on crybaby saying you were my teddy bear means they were soft kind protective now they're just mean etc hmm okay <laughs> Oh, these were reversed. These lines reversed translate to I didn't outgrow you, I did not grow you, throw you out, I did not grow you. Huh. Yeah, this feels like a relationship with someone that's like a narcissist or that's abusive where they kind of love bomb you and they're they're so sweet and they really like gain your trust just to like flip it on its head and make you feel crazy or just make you feel even more hurt than ever because you really thought they were your protector and it turns out they were basically just trying to hurt you more all along. Dang, well there's that song. <laughs> Oh man, Teddy Bear may be about an abusive relationship or one that took a turn for the worst. Okay, next up, the last song on the album, 16, Cake. Your skin is warm like an oven, your kiss is sugary sweet, your fingers feel like cotton, you got all the Vanilla 
The cake metaphor is strong here for sure. <laughs> she's using cake metaphor to basically talk about how she's better off without this guy, maybe. She is going to let him take her heart when he leaves. So she's leaving first and taking her slice of heaven of sex with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just very strong on the metaphor of, of cake using that to convey that she's not just a piece of cake to him that she could just discard away. She says, you're, you're just a piece of meat to me. If I'm a piece of cake, I am just a piece of cake. Then you're a piece of meat to me. Okay. A piece of cake and a piece of meat are both euphemisms for someone who's easy and who can be used for sexual purposes. If he can use her, she sure as hell can use him also. I feel like I'm just missing So good. My sex is a slice of heaven that I gave to you. You should be lucky that I gave that to you. That's the end of the album. Wow, what a freaking album. That was that was really, really, really good. Though I do want to say at the end there, I'm like, it felt a little too much. It felt a little too tight in terms of the the metaphor of childlike things and everything. Especially the last song being cake and having so many things of like vanilla and buttercream and calories. And it's just it's like, it can, it can feel like a little much. The theme being just kind of a little too much in your face. I mean, that's my only critic. I mean, but other than that, like, Wow, phenomenal. So well thought out, so well done. The production, the lyrics, everything is like so freaking good, so perfect. Of course, my brain goes to Taylor Swift. It makes me think of like 1989 being so purposefully like having that theme of it being 80s and having it be sonically just more tight knit as opposed to Red, which is her previous album, which was so sonically like incohesive and which is what led her to make 1989. This makes me think of like 1989 a little bit because it is so cohesive in terms of the theme and the and sonically and everything. And now the deluxe album is the only album on Spotify for Crybaby. It doesn't have like normal Crybaby before deluxe, so I don't know like where the original album ended, but I do like how Cake ends out the album. I think it's a really good closer. I'm so happy I listened to this album. I'm so excited to listen to her other stuff. Coming up next, looks like, is K-12. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up before you go. Comment down below. I love talking to you guys in the comments. Please let me know of any lore that I might have missed. I would love to be filled in more because you guys are so smart and know so much more than I do. I am done with my look. I finished with my look pretty early in this video um, because it, is, it just was super simple. I didn't do anything too crazy. Just super neutral and pretty. And that is it. So I love you guys so much and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!